Hey everyone, welcome to Dot Point P seven and eight, and today we're looking at pastures, both um, native and introduced pastures, and how having a combination of them together um, can help you in your production. So, um, first of all, we'll start with some definitions. Um, a pasture is an area of land covered with grass and other low-lying plants used for grazing of animals, especially sheep and cattle. So that's what a pasture is. Um, a native or natural, uh, sorry, a native pasture. Um, is composed of species originating in a particular area. So obviously native means things that are native to an area or to, con to the country and um, have been here for a very, very, very long time. Um, introduced obviously refers to things that have been brought in from overseas or maybe from another area and um, they, are, they establish themselves in the new place um, and seem to or are able to grow successfully. Pasture management um, is any kind of management or maintenance or guidance that or control that someone has over a grazing area. So some pastures are left um, are natural and then just kind of not managed by people and others are managed pastures by people and um, what species are in there and how well they grow and whether there's fertilizer and that kind of thing is um, determined by people if they're managed. So what's the importance of pastures? Um, first of all, they provide cheap feed, so rather than having to pay to buy, buy in feed or grain or anything like that, pastures um, will provide a really cheap source of feed for cattle or sheep. Um, they help reduce erosion because there's um, plants in the ground that are, the roots are holding the soil together um, and obviously prevent erosion that way from wind or water. They help improve soil fertility, so um, if you include a legume, for example, in your um, pasture, then that's gonna help increase nitrogen. Um, they also diversify income because potentially you can um, you know, harvest parts of your pasture and sell it off. If you include maybe legume or like a lucerne or something in there, you could potentially harvest that and, and sell it. You could also, if you have a good pasture, you could also um, adjust animals where other people pay you to, ha to look after their animals and to keep their animals on your pasture. The last one here, number five, um, it helps stabilizing soil temperature and moisture. So if you've got anything covering the soil, even if it's a mulch or a pasture, then it will help stabilize the um, soil temperature. So let's have a look at four things that um, pastures help do. The first one is um, animal production. So obviously pastures are primarily for um, helping with animal production. They provide food for the grazing animal, which will then um, produce milk or meat or wool um, and like we said it's a cheap form of food. Um, pastures also help with soil improvement so they add organic matter um, the more pasture growing the more organic matter um, they help with aeration and drainage and water holding capacity um, etc. Um, if they're legumes they also increase the chemical fertility or the nitrogen level in the soil. Um, with erosion control um, they reduce the impact of raindrops and wind on the soil and slow down water as it runs across the surface and with weed control if you have a pasture growing, um, that will prevent other things from growing that you don't want to grow there. So a good, well-established um, pasture will help prevent weeds from growing and germinating. Looking at um, three different types of pasture, we have native, we have natural, and we have improved. So a native pasture is one just purely consisting of native species um, that are indigenous to Australia. A natural one is that one that has native and introduced species, but it's not actually being managed by humans. So the, the introduced species have just found their way there um, kind of by chance or just through um, their own natural processes rather than being um, put there by humans. And the last type of pasture is an improved pasture where um, a human has actually intentionally managed the pasture and has um, put um, various uh, species of pasture into um, into that pasture. So a native pasture obviously like we said has only native species indigenous to Australia. Um, it's adapted to low nitrogen and phosphorus um, climates uh, or low low nitrogen and phosphorus soil sorry and then the climate the generally hot and dry um, and native species generally survive very well in hot and dry conditions. However they have <coughs> um, lower nutrition levels for the animals um, and they're not as palatable um, the animals don't, li don't like to eat them as much as they do um, improved species and just not as tasty basically. And um, they don't respond well to fertilizers either. And examples there are um, wallaby grass and kangaroo grass. 
Natural pastures, on the other hand, um, consist of native and introduced species, but they've been um, not haven't been intentionally sown by anyone. They've just turned up, in, and um, they are the way they are by chance. And so they have some benefits of both um, native and introduced species: the drought and heat tolerance, and more palatable and nutritious of introduced species. Um, and the examples there are Paspalum and Kaikyu. Um, and by the way, for native pasture, the examples are wallaby grass and kangaroo grass. Um, really easy to remember. Um, hopefully you don't forget that. <coughs> Lastly, for um, improved pastures, this is a pasture that's been intentionally managed by people and includes um, native and introduced species. And you have the benefit of both being um, better drought tolerance, but also um, high nutrition and very palatable all year round. And that can be well managed by people because um, they can choose exactly which um, species go in there. Moving along to, um, to look at the um, pros and cons of native versus introduced um, pastures. So we have um, digestibility and palatability and protein content. These are production issues. And then we have drought tolerance and influence on erosion. And um, sustain these are sustainability issues. So with native, um, they're low in digestibility and palatability, hard to chew, um, and they're low in protein content. However, they're very good um, at drought tolerance. They're very high, um, high drought tolerance and little need for water. Um, they have a good influence on erosion because they, um, are, they are um, in drought conditions, they stay and they live, but um, in, they're poor in high rainfalls, rainfall areas because um, they're quite spread out and sparse. On the other hand, introduced um, pastures um, have high both protein content and digestibility but their drought tolerance is low and they need a lot of water and their influence on erosion is um, it's good if it's a lot of rain and they can stay alive but if um, it's dry and hot they cannot survive very well. So negative aspects of establishing a pasture are that it takes time to plant and establish and it takes a lot of labour to maintain um, and there's a spent expense associated with the machinery. Um, and so you need to weigh up the production goals of palatability and digestibility and protein versus um, wanting to um, control erosion and drought tolerance um, as to which species of native and introduced you include. Uh, which of the following is most suited to using native pasture species? Um, this answer is A here, semi-arid plains used for wool production because the native species um, is better in that dry area. Um, 2015, what advantage does a pasture consisting of introduced species have over a native pasture system? Um, so introduced species here don't persist very well during drought. Um, they require more fertilizer potentially, um, provide habit for beneficial insects is not really relevant, um, but they have a superior growth rate. How do Australian native pasture species differ, differ from introduced? Um, they are more productive, that's not true. Um, they usually grow active for longer periods, that's not necessarily true. They're generally less susceptible by heavy grazing, not, not necessarily true, um, but they are typically more tolerant of heat and dry conditions. This um, short answer question here from 2012, compare how native and introduced pasture species are used in pasture-based animal production systems. Um, so what I've done is I've talked about um, the key things about native pastures and the key things about introduced pastures, and then I have um, related that back to production systems. So I've said native pasture species have evolved to suit Australia's soil and climate, meaning they grow in nutrient poor soil and in hot dry conditions. They're also lower in nutrient value and palatability to animals. They're included in pasture systems as they grow throughout, uh, they grow through almost all Australian climatic and soil conditions and therefore they're good for sustainability and prevention and of land degradation. So this is the reason that they're important for um, animal production systems. On the other hand, introduced species have higher ground cover percentage during optimum conditions, um, high rainfall and moderate temperature. It would be used to provide increased levels of nutrition and palatability to sheep and cattle. They also require a significantly higher level of nutrients and water to grow. Um, and so that's why they would be used in pasture-based animal production systems. <coughs>